for instance, Jazz Jennings can never have kids. Jazz Jennings also, and this this uh, probably Why part of your studies, care? can't actually feel any said it like sexual uh feeling of, of any kind he has no idea what he's talking about i i, I know <laughs> i i've trans women feel pleasure I, it's it's and even if one does it like who cares <laughs> <laughs> that's the entire fucking point of transition it's supposed to point. make the quality of the person's life better that's such a good point so to say it doesn't matter that that the process or the surgery could end up having the opposite effect it's kind of a big deal! It's kind of a big deal! Buddy! That's the whole point! That's the entire point of the surgery! And I'm not exaggerating here. The argument that Lance put forward and that this guy just put forward is quite possibly the dumbest argument we've ever heard and will ever hear in any political commentary space about any issue. Here is the second clip that we pulled here of Lance on uh, Tim Pool's show, Tim Cast, where they start to talk about uh, trans people and gender affirming care here. This is just Lance uh, at the end of it clowning on Tim. Like, like Tim just gets so angry because Lance is not taking taking him seriously. Yeah, there we go. Well, I mean, uh, I look forward to that. Okay, so my follow up is, you, you think trans people feel safer than ever? No, right now there's over 400 different bills being pushed in the United States that is directly targeting trans people. So they don't feel safe? They, of course they don't. So then why are they coming out if they don't feel safe? They have more access because that generation, Generation Z has a lot more acceptance towards trans people than older people who pass laws, draconian people who pass laws. The boomers are the ones running the show right now. They're still the ones in government. They're still the ones passing laws. There's very few Generation Z in government or parliament. You want, you want to know what I, what I think? I think there is a trans genocide. Okay. And I think it's you. Okay. Because you're sterilizing a lot of these people. How so? I mean, you're they're literally sterilizing them. The, the surgery to remove the gonads, hysterectomies, and puberty and cross sex hormones and puberty blockers have a high rate of sterilization. I mean, first of all, uh, okay, removal of the gonads. Um, so I guess sterilization should be outlawed, even if people want it. No, no, no opportunity if you want to get your tubes tied. <laughs> what a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> what a dummy. <laughs> Yeah, that was the argument. That's what Tim said. He said sterilization should be outlawed. Yeah, okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Well, she's she's inadvertently making the argument that children should be able to sterilize themselves if they are so inclined. Yes. That is the argument she's making. And this is what's so... It's, she makes this really stupid straw man BS argument. Because Tim's position and the people who are talking about this position is that, you know, we don't think... Number one, we don't think that children are given enough information about even like the, the potential um, negative effects, negative health effects that could happen through transitioning, number one. And then number two, even if they are given that information, it's very difficult for an underage child to make a determination that could basically make them sterile for life. Of course, yeah. They don't have, a, they don't have the life experience to make that decision. Right. Yeah. right. You know, usually when people um, get their tubes tied or get a vasectomy, it's like, you know, they're old, right? Right, yeah. They've had two kids, three kids. They're like, I can't have another kid. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I know people that have gotten vasectomies that have like two, three kids already. They're like, I don't want any more. Yeah. So, you know, totally. for, for Emma to bring this up is such an insipid argument. Yeah. Is a crude term for when uh, people who have uteruses choose to, to have that. No um, vasectomies. That's sterilization. See if you want to so get your dumb. tubes tied. <laughs> and to use a crude term for when uh, people who have uteruses choose to to have that. So, first of all, there's two things that are funny there. She said she didn't tubes say women. Tied. I know. She said people that have uteruses. I, I know. know. Yeah, that is funny. Okay. And the second thing is, which is funny because watch out. When okay, trans men, up for that. When trans yeah, men get their tubes tied. <laughs> right. Yeah, which I don't know if that's really an issue for for. Well, I guess if they don't get bottom surgery. Um, but the second thing is that she's like apologizing for using the terms tubes tied. I know. Is that, yeah. is that like a controversial thing to say? Like, oh, you got your tubes tied. I guess. Okay. I don't know. No um, vasectomies. That's sterilization, is it not? You're removing b because you just you want to not have any children yeah. anymore your ability to get pregnant or impregnate someone again like the, the tim so since tim pool said we shouldn't sterilize children he's really saying 
no one, that no get one yeah. can get sterilized. Right. right. What a twisting of the argument. Uh, the implied frivol frivolity with which Tim thinks people get these surgeries is just a f it's a fucking smear and it's disgusting. Yeah. Like nobody is getting these surgeries just like, okay, uh, Snapchat told me that I'm trans and now I doctor give it to me. Yeah. Like this is after a prolonged period of social transitioning that has nothing to do with any sort of like pharmaceutical or surgical intervention. So it's, it's not a question of frivolity, right? It's a question of, People make it, people who think they have a problem, and then they see you know people that are especially kids, a lot of kids, a lot of autistic kids who are starting to go through puberty maybe or maybe before puberty they start to feel unhappy. They say I don't know why I feel unhappy, and then they say they see people online and those people say you know I felt really bad about myself. I felt really bad about my body. Right? Like what kid mm -hmm. growing up didn't feel bad about their body at of some course. point? Of course, yeah. Right. Very I didn't feel good about myself. I didn't feel good about my body. It turned out I had gender dysphoria. I go to the doctor. You know, they give me hormones and all this other stuff. Suddenly, I feel much better about myself. Then you come out socially transition, and depending on where in the country you live, you can get all sorts of people just basically applauding you for social transition. You can get all sorts of you can you know basically open up an entire friend network or the potential for a friend network online in certain situations. So the idea that there isn't a pathway for some people to fall down by mistake here is just this is the this is the performative stupidity aspect of the conversation of course right? yeah perfect especially from people on the left whose entire argument about literally every other position literally every other position that leftists talk about when they make these arguments is that people are blank slates and everything is social conditioning. Right. Yeah. Except they... for this, this is the one thing where it's not. Right. Yeah. You watch one Nick Fuentes video and suddenly you're a Nazi, <laughs> yes. right? But yes. you watch one ContraPoints video and obviously you couldn't immediately come out trans, right? I right. mean, that would never happen. Right. Not in a million years. Right. Unless you have AGP like Philosophy 2. I mean, what are we talking about? Yeah, see? Has Philosophy 2 come out as AGP? I don't, I don't know. know. I'm just, I'm just Look at joking. you. Look at you. <laughs> just throwing shade. Philosophy 2, I think, the said a lot, said all trans people are kind of faking it, I think. It was a big controversy. Yeah, Philosophy Tube said or that... Or most trans people are faking it. Well, I don't remember. Did she say that she doesn't have gender dysphoria or she just said she doesn't think gender... She said she doesn't think gender dysphoria is like... Is a real. real. Yeah. yeah. That was that was her position. Right. Which is pretty Crazy. stupid. <laughs> that was the Riley Dennis position in like 2017. I thought we moved past that. <laughs> I guess not. Where and which, by the way, Tim Pool and all these fucking losers are against too. They're against uh, the pronoun shit. That's why they've made that a big fucking thing the entire time. Guess what? You don't need surgeries for pronouns. You don't. You don't get sterilized when somebody calls you she instead of he. Like like this. Uh, th this is what they do when they're called to account. They act like, oh, I'm just I'm just asking questions about is medicine going too far? But the actual thing is, no. You you hate all of this stuff, and so like you can say like, oh, you're actually concerned about the trans genocide in, in 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 the same statement where you're denying that they even exist exactly and and if they just cared about medical mutilation as i said they'd be against vasectomies they'd be against um any what a dumbass i can't believe she's saying this it keeps coming back to it i know I can't believe she's saying this now a vasectomy is mutilation uh, it's pretty common I mean, for guys to have a vasectomy once they've had as many yeah, kids when they're as like they're going in their to have. Yeah, they're like in their 40s or 50s. Yeah, exactly. Like we're talking about like children. Yeah. This is so stupid. Voluntary sterilization for people who have uteruses, they'd be against breast augmentation. They'd be in, against uh, uh, breast reduction surgery. They'd be against rhinoplasties under the age of 18. You know, you're mutilating your face. Criminal butchers. Exactly. But... They're not. So nice here we job, go. man, Emma. Well, and also, I would I would be curious. I think if you did a poll, most people would be uh, pretty tepid for uh, purely cosmetic surgery on people under eighteen, right? Sure. Yeah. I think most people would be like, yeah, you should probably wait till you're at least eighteen before you get like your breast augmentation <laughs> or I mean, like your nose job or something. Like I don't know. I wouldn't want my child to you know to do cosmetic surgery unless she had some like you know. 
uh, accident or defect, birth defect or something. I mean, you're, they're literally sterilizing them. The, the surgery to remove the gonads, hysterectomies, and puberty and cross sex hormones and puberty blockers have a high rate of sterilization. I mean, first of all, uh, removal of the gonads in the uterus is an absolute sterilization, and then puberty blockers have a very high rate, uh, and uh, cross sex hormones have an extremely high rate of sterilizing the individual. So these people can no longer reproduce. That's genocide. Right. So, is this the joke you're going to go for? Joke? Go for? You are removing these people's ability to reproduce. Mm. You? And if they're a young... What, like, sorry, Lance is doing this? I guess, yeah. Or is yeah, this, is Lance like... a doctor? Is Lance a gender-affirming care provider? Yeah, or is this, like, the uh, patients themselves, their parents, and doctors over a prolonged period of assessment? <laughs> like, like, nobody's doing this to anybody. Yeah. Yeah, they are. What is he <laughs> talking about? Look, the kid obviously can't consent. The parent is consenting for them. But if yeah. a kid, well, if a parent walked in and said, "Listen, I want my kids a fucking holy terror. I want to sterilize them," <laughs> they're gonna say, "Fuck you!" Right? 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 Well, I mean, that that's the whole thing. They, this is the problem. I wish, I wish we had, you know, I wish we had institutions and medical, uh, you know, places and trans care places where I trusted that these people were using a model of care that wouldn't, you know, cause a shit ton of trans regret in the future. But I have no trust for that of course, because yeah. of the desistance rates changes so massively. Once, affir once the affirmative care model was put in place and desistance rates for children went from 60 to 90% to like 20 to 2%. I mean, that's pretty scary. And the fact that all these people that run these clinics basically seem to shrug. I mean, I'm sure there's some. I'm sure there's some good ones in there. But since a lot of the people, at least the ones that are public, and a lot of people discussing these issues, basically shrug their shoulders and pretend that's not a big deal because of the politics of the situation, is ludicrous. And as as you said when you read the Tavistock book, there were people that worked there that were like, hmm, you know, something isn't adding up here. Who were legitimate doctors, le legitimate therapists, legitimate psychologists. And they were getting shamed by their coworkers. Yeah, they were for not being called woke. transphobic immediately. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, which really so, no. sucks. It's it's a big problem. If you ask these people, look, juvenile delinquents, let's sterilize them. What do you think? I mean, they are <laughs> juvenile delinquents, right? right. They right. would be up in arms. Oh my God, what are you doing? You can't sterilize these people. But you just talk about how trans people are sterilizing themselves and suddenly they don't understand the argument. What yeah. do you mean it's a genocide? I don't get it. Look, right. see, if we sterilize juvenile delinquents, we're trying to genocide the fucking juvenile delinquents. To, to, <laughs> like, it's pretty basic. It's pretty easy to understand, right? Right. We're right. trying to take that out of the gene pool. Well, there is a good counter argument to this, but they have no, none of them have made the counter argument. Um, mm -hmm. at least from the level of the genocide thing, which is that, you know, obviously, um, now being gay and being trans is obviously not the same as I said a million times, oh, but we yeah, don't know exactly the mechanism that causes gender dysphoria or someone to become trans, assuming it's something people are born with to some extent. Right. Right. So You're we not talking necessarily... about social contagion, obviously. We, right. Now I do. There's a lot there of is... people that we don't think have gender dysphoria. They're just, you know. They are maybe have depression mistake. or they maybe are autistic and they're right. misinterpreting that as gender dysphoria. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And, but, you know, but for the people that do really have gender dysphoria, I mean, since we don't know the mechanism of it, it's something that could very easily be passed along other genetic yeah. markers, you know, totally. you know, kind of like, cause obviously like with homosexuality, if that was something that only passed along the genetic line of people that were homosexual, it would have died out long ago. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so, but obviously that's not the case right they're still alive and they're making this choice themselves yeah. and it's not passed down through birth like no. you're not eliminating trans people because trans people aren't having trans children that's not how that works what's what, what's freakish and 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 like sort of medically brutal is to say like okay this child uh socially transitioning starting like age four which is very common like that young kids know oh my God, that's really this bad. Is driving me crazy, Sid. Age four, that's really bad. Four years old, people are picking their their biological sex now. Yeah, that four year old really Why? knows. They really know at four. They Why? can just Jesus. Isn't I mean? Oh my. Okay. At four years old, 
I I literally watched Michael Jackson's Bad and thought Michael Jackson was a girl because he had long hair. Right. So I'm not sure if four year olds yeah. are really good at making these determinations. You don't have the kind of experience necessary to make these no. decisions at four years old. Well, and also you're, uh, you're making them off of oh I like pink. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm. This is like the total ideological melting your brain because anyone that's ever interacted with a four year old or any young child knows kids are so bad at verbalizing what they're feeling. Oh, of course. Yeah. They can't properly explain things for whatever reason. And if you remember it was like that, that age, you'll remember you were really bad at explaining things. Yeah. Oh, this so, is so sick. Like you have this super complicated thing about like, oh, how do you, how does your gender identity and you think your four year old is going to be able to like compre give you like a comprehensive answer about it. This is a cult, Sitch. This is totally a cult. This is like yeah. they're passing around. Who? Where did this meme come from that four-year-olds know their gender identity and can pick which biological sex they're going to be for the rest of their lives? When did that I, become I, a thing, Sitch? Well, I, I guess it's because, so one of the uh, factors and criteria when trying to diagnose gender dysphoria is it's supposed to be a persistent, the person had a persistent gender identity that was opposite of their sex. And so that's kind of morphed into this insane idea that like four-year-olds, you know, even when they were four, they knew, right? What happened to yeah. it's a phase and you're, it's a phase you're going through. What happened to that? Well, it's like my mom who used to be a deaf educator. She said um, there was a little kid uh, who he would always carry around a purse. He was a little boy mm -hmm. and his mom would get so mad at him because, um, you know, the it was a Hispanic family, and they had the father was very like you know, oh, machismo, machismo. Yes, yeah. look, 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 let me be racist for a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of like cultural machismo, and so they're very upset about the boy walking around carrying a purse. Mm -hmm. Now, my mom, who was very smart, was like, Well, how do you know he doesn't just want like a, a bag to put stuff in? Yeah, like, why do you associate purse. with feminine, like with something feminine? Why don't you give him a little briefcase? And so they gave him a little briefcase instead of a purse, and he was like, Oh, I love this little briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. so badass it's only a little briefcase so i'm just thinking like now he's like oh that little boy really likes a purse maybe he's transgender oh of course yeah they'd be they would be socially transitioning him and he was this kid was like four or five it was like just i don't know this whole thing's so stupid yeah get in the briefcase that's awesome man the four-year-old carrying around a briefcase that's amazing <laughs> that's amazing um, okay, now they're uh, 12, approaching puberty, and there's actual interventions that can be done to uh, help them avoid a puberty into a body that they no longer identify with, forcing them, because a fucking Republican lawmaker needed it to get elected, um, to go through that puberty is, that to me is monstrous. That to me is genocide. That to me is asking that person to consider suicide. Forcing them to go through the puberty that their body will naturally go through. <laughs> it's well, not forcing anything. Well, it you're so intervening. Again, you're the one that's forcing them to go through another puberty. Well, I mean, it's kind of like, um, such as law of like, you know, well, someone wants to do something and you don't let them, you know, is it force? Even if it's going to happen naturally, you know, kind of how are we defining force? Um, remember what but, everyone said about you being meaner? <laughs> you gonna let this fucker off the hook, sis? Is that what's going on here? I could be. You gonna read? You gonna read? You gonna still... redefine Mister Good Faith Gary? This uh -huh. guy making this piece of shit argument? Uh huh. Well, no, I was gonna say the, the real problem I have with this argument, the problem that I have with this argument, isn't the question of, of using the word force. It's the question of, again, if we knew, right? If they could put you in the brain scan machine and the machine algorithm would say you have a ninety nine percent chance of being generous for you, right? Right. Then I wouldn't care. I'd be like, fine, whatever. Give them puberty blockers. You know, that's all we got. That's the only uh, treatment option we have. Sure. But we don't have that technology. And the problem is that if if there's this massive over represent or massive over um not representation, Pres over prescribing. Prescri yeah. Yeah. Over prescription of, of uh over gender dysphoria. Whatever. Yeah. Over diagnosis of gender dysphoria that would be a better way of saying it. This is massive over diagnosis of gender dysphoria you know, you're going to end up creating a lot more harm in the world than you will create good. I mean, this is, you know, there are reasons uh, in which people still get electroshock treatment nowadays. And there's still things that they do it for. If you have massive depression, I think if you have mm -hmm. 
certain, I think if you have massive bipolar and there's some other conditions, will it give you uh, electroshock treatment yeah. that can be helpful? A couple but brain that zaps mean that, do, right. you, do you some good. Exactly. The brain zaps will do you so good sometimes. But it doesn't mean that when it first came out and they basically were giving it to fucking everyone and they're right. doing it way too much. It doesn't mean that that, you know, just because it has some utility to some people doesn't mean it has, you know, you should just overprescribe it to everyone or that you have to worry about the overprescription of it to everyone. Oh, man. That's true of every medicine. That's true of every uh, surgery. That's true of everything, you know, in the health field. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Here we go. That's genocide. Right. Is this, is this the joke you're going to go for? Joke? You, go for? you are removing these people's Not ability to reproduce. Mm hmm. And if they're a young age and they haven't had the ability, like for instance, Jazz Jennings can never have kids. Jazz Jennings also, and this this uh, probably Why part of your studies, care? can't actually feel any said like sexual uh, feeling of, of any kind. Do you have any idea how weird this sounds right now? Like, why, why are you what, obsessed what, with what, a stranger's what, genital pleasure? That's so <laughs> weird. That's so bizarre. That was very weird yourself. This is like two dodges in a row. Yeah. First he calls it a joke, which is a dodge, and then he goes to the genital pleasure thing, which is another dodge. He's literally looking for some sort of counter argument here. Mm -hmm. You, you guys are all right. No, no, no. So I'm talking about adults who engage in activities, which is a large portion of the global economy, whether you like it or not. Sure. Sex sells, they say. Global and when economy. I say this person will never have this ability, you go, this how is weird is that? It's weird for you to fixate on a stranger's it's, genital pleasure. That's and then he reframes it as fixating on her having Genital sex. pleasure. Right. When he's basically saying, look, people should grow up to have healthy sex lives. He's saying, no, you're focusing on Jazz Jennings' sex life. No, he's not. He never did that. He never said that. No. He's talking yeah. about people that get these surgeries overall. Yeah. And just using Jazz Jennings' example. Yep. Have you ever seen yes, the movie Dude, Where's My Car? Of course. That's a great movie. Do you obviously. remember the um, evil alien? What's my tattoo oh. say? <laughs> Dude! Dude! <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. The aliens. Uh, yeah, you remember they're like these hot uh, aliens that are trying to destroy the universe. Oh yeah, um, and uh, they keep saying to they keep saying to the the heroes, the protagonists of the movie, "What well, we will perform genital pleasure on you." <laughs> oh, us yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> so every time I see this clip, I just think of that movie with the the aliens talking about we genital will pleasure. will perform genital pleasure because <laughs> no one I've never heard, like outside of that movie, I've never heard those words being used to discuss this like topic it is uh, it is hilarious it's more funny like, in that movie though well that was like the whole like when the person's writing the script they're like how would like weirdo aliens describe sex genital pleasure like you never describe it this way of and course. here we have lance he's like okay lance <laughs> outing like himself <laughs> lance outing himself as an alien yes yes of he's just course. so detached from everything so bad faith why are you considering the, the genital pleasure of another person tim pool <laughs> I am definitely a human. <laughs> Please. I swear to God, they talk about this for forty-five minutes in that on that leftist mafia thing. They yes. bring on a trans person to talk about their genital pleasure experience. Oh my God! <laughs> they do. They literally do. That's hilarious. <laughs> It's so bizarre. Well, like, she's why, public why? about it. But, but see, that's, you're not making an argument right now, is my point. I'm not. I'm saying it's weird. It's not an argument. Yeah, that's, like, that's, I, that's an observation. So you're trying to make a, an appeal to emotion and an appeal no, to shame. No, I'm just, I'm just sorry, giving the you argument, my the argument. Really, what he's doing is dodging. Look, he wasn't yeah. expecting that line of attack. He's like, what, me? I'm the one doing the genocide? Oh, my God. Right. So he's never heard that argument before. I'm, I'm never sure thought that, about uh, it. I'm sure Emma and the disembodied voices of... Uh, Sam Buckets will mm -hmm. have some very brilliant commentary on this uh, exchange. Yeah, the guy who thinks that four-year-olds are the ones picking should pick their biological sex. That's yes. super intelligent. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Argument is, this is this shit is all irrelevant and not politics. And you're fucking like that is an argument. Yes. Like Lance is be, gonna be generous and say, "Fine, I'm just making an observation." No, that's an argument. Argument is like this is fucking bullshit. What the are we talking about? The argument is stop fixating on Jazz Jennings, a 22 year old YouTuber. Who I've never heard pleasure, of before. You yeah. fucking freak. Yeah. Right. Such. <laughs> This is, <laughs> I think this is more bad faith than we've seen on the show in a long time here. Who Who is that guy? Because I never heard that guy on the show before. I don't even know who that is. Now they're yelling from the sidelines. Yeah, there's some third guy, there's some third wheel here that's even dumber than the normal cast. Right, yeah. 
So I don't know who that is, but um, so okay, the, like, the, imagine that you're in a conversation, okay, with uh, someone who is like a fundamentalist, you know, Islamic person. Okay. And and they're advocating for female genital mutilation. Okay. The removal of the clitoris or some oh, other. Oh, sitch. You Don't know, explain removal. it. The other removal of some female body part. Right. And you're like, I think that that's a barbaric and, and horrible pra uh, practice that you're doing to these little girls. Right. And they look at you square in the eyes and they say, why do you care about a stranger's genital pleasure, you sick freak? Yeah. Yeah. Is there any I would, response? I would say they're bad faith. I'd say, listen. Yes. <laughs> you stupid motherfucker. I mean, the only response is to just slap them in the face. <laughs> immediately walk yeah. away like yeah. shut the fuck up that's the dumbest fucking argument i've ever heard and you know that all these people on on the majority report none of them would ever say oh it's totally fine for female you know female general mutilation if it's like you know the person's culture right if the person agree if the four-year-old right or if the 11 year old or 10 year old girl agrees to do it then you know why can't you do it why not because uh, that would be barbaric, Sitch, obviously. Well, but she's agreeing. Why do you Why do you care about her sexual pleasure? Yeah. I'm just this looking. Is... I wanted to look up. What? How many videos they have on female genital mutilation. <laughs> it's it's so wild. This argument is so... Yeah. This is how drunk on your own ideological farts you have to be to buy... This is literally... Quite possibly, and I'm not exaggerating here, the argument that Lance put forward and that this guy just put forward is quite possibly the dumbest argument we've ever heard and will ever hear in any political commentary space about any issue, okay? True, yeah. To just say, you can't care about what you perceive of as bad things happening to other people makes you a weirdo. That's mm -hmm. like saying, if you're like talking about... um you know, the Uyghur genocide, you say, well, why do you care about what's happening to strangers across the world, you freak? Yeah, it's totally stupid, obviously. We're having the whole conversation because we care about other people's well-being. Yes. Both parties well, you know, are doing that, yeah. You grab this fucking idiot by the, the collar and say, why do you care about giving health care to millions of Americans, you freak, to a bunch yeah. of strangers? Exactly. You moron. This is so stupid. This is just one of the possibly dumbest arguments we've ever heard. And they just sit here and they're like, yeah, that's a great argument. Yeah. I found the smoking gun, Sitch. Right here. What? Four weeks ago. Yeah. Emma debates caller about circumcision. Why is Emma so fixated on baby dicks? <laughs> what the hell? Why is she obsessed with baby dicks? What is her, what is her position on, on circumcision? She's a pedophile. That's what her position is. She's obsessed with baby dicks. She can't stop debating callers about them. Uh huh. Uh huh. Why is she so focused? Why is she fixated on that, Sitch? Circumcision, not circumstance. Circumcision. I gotta find this video. Emma debates caller on cir about okay. circumcision. It's from four weeks ago. You know she's against circumcision. Come, come on. All the lefties are against circumcision now. You know that, mm -hmm. right? Because they're obsessed with baby dicks. Obviously, that's why. <laughs> The memo went out. <laughs> um, well, actually, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. I'm, I'm curious if she's in favor of it or against it. So I don't know the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't want to yes, assume do. her position. Yes, right? you do. Yes, yeah. you do. Come on. Do I? Yeah, you do. Okay. I, I don't. I won't describe to her. Listen, I'm. I'm good faith. I don't want to describe to her position. She doesn't have. We'll look later. So. We'll look later but but look, that would be the question why does she care either way either position she has in circumcision you just say why do you care about baby dicks yeah why is she so obsessed with baby dicks that she wants to debate callers on them there you go exactly and like what if she could <laughs> what if all of a sudden like the med medicine has gotten to a point where okay actually she she feels even better pleasure like what fucking point does it it doesn't that, it's that's all not completely irrelevant true. there are wait 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 <laughs> How is that's, the that's side effect stupid. 
of a surgery irrelevant. That is so <laughs> stupid. Is that? that is so like, stupid. Like, listen, listen, uh, disembodied voice of the majority report. Okay, we can replace your face with a baboon's ass. <laughs> but the side effect is you'll die. <laughs> it's like, well, that's irrelevant. I want the baboon's ass on my face. <laughs> it's like, what kind of fucking argument is this? The isn't the this side effect from not doing gender affirming care in their in their bubble is yeah suicide. It can be yes, of course. Yeah. Well, but see, why that, is that this, relevant? I exactly, exactly. Yeah, why is that relevant to anything? Who cares? Why do you care if strangers kill themselves? <laughs> That's yes. the answer. So it brings up this: Why do you care about a pleasure? Uh, a stranger generally say, "Well, why do you care about a stranger killing themselves?" Yeah, totally. Why the fuck do you care? Yeah. Hi. Get over it already. <laughs> Jeez. But trans women feel... Uh, he has no idea what he's talking about. I, I, I know. <laughs> I, I've Trans women feel pleasure. I, it's, it's... And even if one does it, like, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> wait, like, okay, wait. Here's what you have to ask a guy. It's say, okay, what is the entire point I don't know if you can answer this question. You ask him, say, what is the entire point of trans affirming care in the first place? Like, what is the purpose of doing it, right? It's supposed to be to make the person's, the quality of the person's life better. <laughs> That's the entire fucking point of transition. It's supposed to point. make the quality of the person's life better. That's such a good point. So to say it doesn't matter that, that the process or the surgery could end up having the opposite fucking effect is kind of a big deal. It's kind of a big deal, buddy. That's the whole point. That's the entire fucking point of the surgery. Look, your life is going to be miserable. You're going to be totally depressed for the rest of your life. You're going to hate yourself. You're going to hate every single thing we've done to you. You're going to regret ever engaging in this. But, but you're not going to kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? It's like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. What is happening here? This is the world we're living in. So. Oh my god! I think I think the voice one of the voices of the disembodied guys is Matt Letch. Oh, you've looked him up. You dialed yes. it in. Wow. I was curious. I wanted to give a name to the voice. I don't know who the second voice is, but one of them is Matt Letch. Who even cares if they enjoy life? Yeah. Who cares? Jesus Christ! Even if they can't, even if they hate themselves, who gives I a know. fuck? As listen, as long as you're able to win arguments against right boys on the internet, I that's know. all that matters. Oh, it's listen, so torturous. I it's don't so care torturous. how many trans women can't feel genital pleasure as long as I can win an argument against Tim Pool. It's so bad. That's exactly what's going on, too. And you know, that's exactly what they will accuse people on the right of doing. They're like, they don't care about trans people, they just want to win an argument. <laughs> Right? That's right. what they say all the time. It's, Look in the mirror, so, buddy. And it, this is so pointless. They could make an they could actually make a not fucking stupid argument. Okay. The argument that they could make is yes, there is a side effect to some of these surgeries and procedures that can, you know, affect someone's sex life, obviously. Mm -hmm. And yes, I think that those that there needs to be informed consent when people go through this, but if someone has to choose between death and doing this other thing that could that could have a negative effect on their sex life, I think people should be able to give that option. If they say, well, I'm going to choose, you know, I'm going to choose to do this instead of committing suicide, right? Or instead of being depressed all the time, right? That would be the argument. That'd be the fucking normal argument to make. But they can't even spend two seconds thinking about this to give some sort of cogent argument because they're so wrapped up in this, like, the identity politics issue of it, as opposed to thinking of it as a healthcare issue. Of course, yeah. They're not even thinking about the issue at all. It's just all about owning Tim Pool. <laughs> it's so sad. I th I think the other disembodied voice, mm -hmm. the one that called him a sick freak, mm -hmm. I think is is a guy named Bradley, who's mm -hmm. the, who's their one of their producers. You sick freak! Sick freak! <laughs> what? Man, you need to get off the internet. Seriously, you need to like take a break. Jesus. Take a day off. Yes.
Look, we call Lance a sick freak all the time, but you know, we're just having <laughs> Have we ever called Lance a sick freak? We're just Sorry. having fun here. I don't think so. Yeah, no, I don't think we've called Lance a sick freak. <laughs> no. Look, I don't hate any of these people either. I, Lance is just I mean, he's delusional and Right. And uh I don't hate these people. They're cash cows for us. What are you talking about? Yeah. I but love I, these people. I feel like there's a lot of hatred there for Tim Pool. Like he, if he had a button yeah, that, you know, if he had the death note book, whose name do you think he's writing They would write first? Tim Pool's name in the death note. You're 100% yes, right. Yeah. yeah. That's true. That'd be like the first name they write down. That is scary, isn't it? It is. It's totally scary. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a level of hatred that's just unhealthy. There's there's no one in the internet politics space I would write his name in the death note. Okay. Yeah, me neither, obviously. Yeah. Except for... <laughs> no, I'm just mm -hmm. kidding. It's yeah. their choice. Right. Like... I mean, again, these this is the medical freedom people. Do we have like stuff from what, what Tim Pool was saying about vaccines? They're ta They're literally talking about choice consent they're talking about for children yeah that's a little weird <laughs> yeah why do you care so much about children consenting to things for yeah fucking sick freaks it's so weird they don't understand that children can't really consent to anything it's the parents that are doing the consenting on behalf of the children well there you go she's like listen here's your bad faith argument okay i guess you can hit someone Here's your evil bad faith argument. If someone hits you with a bad faith, why do you care about their genitals argument? You hit mm -hmm. them with a bad faith. Oh, so you think children can consent to these surgeries? So you think children can consent to sex, mm -hmm. obviously, right? I mean, if they can consent to decisions about that will affect their sex, why wouldn't they be able to consent to sex logically? So therefore, yeah. you guys are all pedophile groomers. Really weird that we don't let kids get tattoos, but we'll let them cut their junk off. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bizarre. Oh, yeah, pretty, pretty sure I remember him being in favor of people's individual freedom to make their own choices with medicine. But here, not kids, you stupid. Oh, my God. I know. Here we go. About it. But, but see, that's, you're not making an argument right now, is my point. I'm not. I'm saying it's weird. It's not an argument. Yeah, that's, like, that's, I, that's an observation. So you're trying to make a, an appeal to emotion and an appeal no, to shame. No, I'm just, I'm just giving you my genuine thought when you say something like that. Like, well, why, that was, why should... that it was a really fucking pathetic attempt to try to make an argument. Talk about... so, mad. so mad. Woo! A pathetic attempt at an argument that Lance specifically said he wasn't making because he was making an observation, Damn. which was basically an argument that you're a fucking freak. Tim. How about this, Tim? You're a groomer, 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 fixating on other people's sexualities, fixating on it for no reason. How about that? That's why he got triggered, because he knows that his fixation is unnatural and fucked up and that he's titillated in some way by it. Oh, my God, <laughs> Sitch. This is insane. I never watched this clip. Oh, my God. <laughs> She's basically it, calling him a pedo. It's funny because, you know, the clip that went viral from this was all about the, the her insane thing about the Jordan Neely thing. And everyone fucking forgot about the part where she called Tim Pool a pedophile. This is so weird. <laughs> yes. Yes. She's like, Tim, if you care about this issue, it must be because you're a pedophile. <laughs> what a weirdo. Holy crap. This is whole, so bad faith. Yeah. Well, this is the and, whole they're lying, or I think they're lying, so I get to lie about them, you know, mindset, essentially. Yeah. That is what he's providing for their audience, like some fixation on other people's genitalia and sexuality. Psycho. Um, You're, what, do you, uh, what do you call it? A really fucking pathetic? Like, that is somebody who is mad. That's, a, wait, is that an argument? Is that an argument? You're doing a fucking appeal to a emotion. Damn yeah, it. right, right. You're is doing it? a fucking appeal to emotion by triggering me. Sorry, is it also is it also a, an argument to say that you're saying that? Did you, do you like that their their commentary is basically just falling into ha 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 ha? Tim Pool got triggered. Ha ha ha. He got triggered because Lance said something really fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah, no, their commentary is garbage. I mean, it's laughably garbage, but. <laughs> Is it a really cogent argument that a 22-year-old YouTuber apparently, that, according to you, doesn't feel sexual pleasure because she's a trans person? Um, I mean, I, I, I... Show your evidence, Tim. Tim, Tim's... It's weird because 
they, like the, I don't know. Maybe it's just my impression. The way they're talking about this, even though they say like she's 22 years old, they're making it sound like Jazz Jennings is like some underage girl or something. <laughs> like she's 22. She's an adult. Like oh, of course, yeah. It, it's weird. The way they're discussing this is like as if it's people talking about underage kids. Right. Yeah. And also, I mean, they're also the whole reason that Tim bought it, brought it up was because there's the whole controversy with you know Jazz Jennings not necessarily wanting to continue going through with the lower body process she has to go through and because it was painful or something and her mom you know trying to pressure her to keep going through with it and like there's this whole like fucked up situation you know regarding the situation and that's why a lot more trans people nowadays it seems like are not electing to do bottom surgery anymore even if they transition well she, jazz jennings is on the record saying she feels no sexual pleasure at all like Right. What's the point of having a non-functional vagina if you don't if you feel get any pleasure out of it whatsoever? It would just be, you know, it could it could presumably for some people, uh, it could help with dysphoria, like just look like knowing that you, you know, if you had a penis, you could feel it or look at it or something it would probably hurt the dysphoria aspect of it. But yeah, I guess I I I don't understand, but he's really not familiar with anatomy um i'd imagine that his partners probably would feel the same way not to you know i'm jazz just, I'm... jennings another Wait, instance what is she what did she just say the guy tim tim's really not familiar with anatomy um i'd imagine that his partners probably would feel the same way not to you know... oh he's saying that tim <laughs> she's saying that's that all... tim doesn't know his way around the vagina is what she's saying she's okay like, I, I she's don't throwing know what... shade here she's like right tim there can't get tim doesn't give girls any sort of satisfaction so based on the comment of Tim saying that's that, you know, this individual who transitioned mm -hmm. uh, lost the ability to feel sexual pleasure, mm -hmm. genital pleasure, as Lance would say, um, that so how does that translate to Tim doesn't understand how the body works? This is an attempted ad hominem. OK. Saying that Tim Bull's girlfriends don't get off. That's basically right. what she's trying to say here. Right. I mean, I assume they don't get off because he probably, you know, he never takes the beanie off. So I think dis Emma disconcerting, you know. I think Emma is a mean girl. I really do. Of course, that's she, like I mean, a, she. That's a she went girl. to that forty thousand dollar a year high school. <laughs> what do you think went to that school? It's just it's sad. It's totally sad. It's like yeah. what if, this is what passes for commentary. You're gonna like it's, mm -hmm. go after Tim's. She's like she's literally going after it's funny that the whole argument is Tim is focused on this other person's sexuality and now she's postulating about Tim Poole's sexuality. Right. It's like what? Why do you care about the sexuality of Tim Poole, a total stranger? You sicko. Right. But now she's basically imagining Tim Poole having sex and not being able to figure out where the G spot is. Right. Well, there's this annoying hypocrisy. That's why everyone hates leftists, because since the leftists have adopted this uh, oppression hierarchy, people's peoples are for mm -hmm. everything, that it allows them to basically be hypocrites in their own minds with impunity. With impunity. So, for example, like if a man attacks a woman for being fat, or being ugly, or not having kids, or some other aspect of her like biological person, but mm -hmm. you know, you get to you get to attack that man for being a horrible sexist bigot. But they have perfect uh, immunity to basically being able to insult a man for his biological personhood and his ability to perform sex acts. Because what's the number one insult they throw at all everyone they don't like? You're an incel. Yeah. You don't. Get, you're not having sex with women, which is hilarious because not only is it hypocritical from the aspect of you, like you're able to, they're allowing themselves to be able to mock a man on the basis of their manliness. But by calling them incels, they're adopting the very anti-feminist framing that they are supposed to be fighting against that a man is judged by his worth and his ability to fuck women, which is something feminists have been trying to fight for decades. Right. And they're just reinforcing it. Yeah. Yeah, they can't help themselves because <laughs> they're all brain dead. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. So many people just ab adopt their political philosophy based on aesthetics not on the actual principles of the philosophy yeah, yeah. well they don't it, it, they don't care they just want to be mean They're like well if this hurts your feelings yeah then I'm, the i don't care if it violates my principles <laughs> where's the quote oh the, the huxley quote i think i have it on my 
they're like saved forever. The surest way to work up a crusade in favor of some good cause is to promise people they will have the chance of maltreating someone <laughs> to be able to destroy with good conscience, to be able to behave badly and call your bad behavior righteous indignation. <laughs> this is the height of psychological luxury and the most yeah. delicious of moral treats. All this Huxley. God. Mm. Yum. Yeah. I hope he pat himself on the back pretty hard after he wrote that one. <laughs> fucking, he deserves it. <laughs> that is that is some <laughs> juicy truth there. Yep. That's some truth bombs. You know, I'm Jazz just, Jennings, I'm, another instance. Like that actually this is the thing to drill down on. I'm drill down on, on he's going you freak. right, right. But the, the, this this puts the lie to all their bullshit. Uh, Jennings was assigned male at birth and was diagnosed with gender dysphoria by age four. The idea that all of this is um, some sort of thing they learn at school for you're not at school yet um, or some sort of mind virus by TikTok is just ludicrous. This is all that's happened is kids who did this like 60 years ago were told, uh, no, <laughs> put yeah. on these fucking bib overalls and do this. And what? How old was Jazz when the TV show started? <clears throat> I don't know, but is, what he's saying is completely stupid because obviously the mom learned about it somewhere. She didn't. She learned about it. Well, once. that's yeah, exactly. That's yeah. the whole thing that he's leaving out so conveniently. Yeah. What are you talking about? Like, if the mom hadn't learned anything about gender dysphoria or any of this stuff, do you think Jazz Jennings would be what she is? Fuck no. It says in two thousand and seven. So Jazz Jennings was born in 2000. So in 2007, at the age of seven, uh, Jazz Jennings received national attention when she was interviewed by Barbara Wawa Walters on 2020 right. about her being transgender. So, but this is, this is, of course, this is what, and then when the TV show started, and the TV show started in 2015. So here's the problem. Your four-year-old girl, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who uh, you're think you're transgender maybe you are maybe you're not who the fuck knows and then you have public attention for being transgendered and then you get a tv show um that's literally about her being transgender how the fuck is she ever gonna not like that you can't go like that'd be such a like there's so much social pressure at oh that my point god it's a mess to keep remaining and identifying as trans <sighs> that you're literally you're providing money for your entire family Right, because I don't know what her parents said, but I bet that that TV show made more than whatever her parents were doing. Of course, yeah, they became full-time Jazz Jennings managers. So, you know, the idea that oh, the idea that there's not going to be some social pressure put on her by her parents is preposterous, right? Or potential social pressure, I should say, because I don't know what the situation with Jazz. They're going to do a reality show about detransitioning next. It's going to be a fucking horror right. show. She even they wrote she wrote a children's book in 2014. She had a documentary in 2011 that premiered on Oprah Winfrey's network. Uh, oh in 20 God. in 2007, her parents founded Trans Kid Purple Rainbow Foundation. So I mean, like they've been like heavily financially involved with their ch their child's transition for years. Yeah. Uh, it's so, this is so sad. This just makes me super sad. Yep. Hi, you just listened to a clip from the Sitch and Adams show. If you like what you heard, you can listen to our live show right here on this channel on Sunday, starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And if you want, you can super chat us. We read $20 and up super chats on the show and then do a follow-up stream on the following Tuesday where we read the rest of the unread super chats and interact with fans of the show. Subscribe to this channel right here to listen to the live show or to listen to more of our awesome clips.